Hi, my name is Hai Chen. I am a sophomore in computer science. Outside of classes, I am involved in the Society of Women Engineers and uh, the Women's Chapter of the Association for Computing Machinery. I like computer science because it allows me to create anything I'm passionate about without the use of heavy machinery. Just a computer is sufficient. I also really like solving logic puzzles, so debugging to me feels like solving those puzzles. I welcome you to this CSM Minds video. Today we'll be delving deeper into using lists in Python. But first, here's a good tip using debugging. One of the best programming skills you can have is knowing when to walk away for a while. Let's start with a review of what we've learned about lists already. Lists are a data structure that allows us to store ordered data. We place a piece of data at a certain location in a list, and that piece of data will stay in that location in the list until we change it. We access a certain value stored in a list using an offset to the location where the value is stored. Remember, the first element of your list has an offset or index of zero. You need to keep this in mind whenever you use a list. You might be wondering, why don't lists just start at one? Are they trying to confuse us? There's actually a reason that the first element in a list has an index of zero. The elements of a list are stored consecutively in memory with a base address. The offset is then added to the base address in order to access the memory address of the list item you want. For example, suppose we have a list with elements 12, 13, 7, 21, and 3. Further suppose that this list is stored in memory at base address 1350. By the way, this is just an example base address, not a real one. If we want to access the first element in the list, the memory address is 1350 plus 0. If we want to access the second element in the list, the memory address is 1350 plus 1, etc. Thus, the index of the first element where the value 12 is stored is 0. As a reminder, lists can be concatenated using the plus operator. This easily allows us to combine lists whenever needed, as shown in an example on this slide. As you know, lists don't have to hold the same values forever. You can change an element of a list by using the index of the value you would like to change. Consider the example on this slide. How does the code shown change the list? As shown, the list stays the same, except the value 7 that was at index 2 is now 8. Consider this second example. Do you think this line of code will work? No. The index 3 does not actually exist within this list. That is, since the list only has three elements, the only possible offsets are 0, 1, and 2. In other words, you cannot assign a value to an index that does not exist within a list. If you try and execute this statement, your interpreter will give you a runtime error. We encourage you to load up your Python interpreter and try it. As we mentioned in a previous Python video, lists can sort dif different types of data, including other lists. See the line of code on the screen as an example of a list containing two lists. The obvious question is then, how do we access the value in this list, for example, the number 4? Accessing and indexing the list is not too hard, you just need another set of brackets. As shown on the slide, take a look at the code snippet. What do you think will be printed? We'll give you a second to think about this. Consider the output of the first print statement. The first bracket has an index of 0, which says to look at the first element in the list. In the first element of the list is the list 1, 2, 3. The second bracket has an index of 1, which says to look at the second element in the list. So this will be a value 2. Thus, 2 is printed. The second print statement prints the entire list of lists after changing the first element of the first list to be the first element of the second list. In other words, the value 4 is copied to the memory address of where the value 1 used to be. This example shows a 2D list. You can make a 3D list if desired. You just need to add another list within a list that is within a list. We'll skip the details of this and instead encourage you to play around with lists in the Python interpreter. Python offers a number of methods or functions that you can use with lists. Don't worry about writing these down right now as we are going to go over these functions in the next few slides. First, if you are still confused about how lists work, we suggest you go back and watch the video about list basics before moving on with list functions in this video. As we consider the various list functions, let's start with a basic list example. 
We will use MyList in the following slides. Let's start with the functions that are available to you for adding elements to a list. First, we can append to the end of the list with the code example shown on the screen. Notice that the function append is called by using the dot operator with the MyList variable. This append command then adds a string new to the end of your MyList variable. We can also extend the list by adding another list. If new list has the elements 3, 2, and world, then my list is now extended to include those three elements. Again, notice that the function extend is called by using a dot operator with the my list variable. And finally, we can insert an element into an existing list. In this case, the first argument is the index in the list where you would like to add an element. And the second argument is the value you would like to add. So in this case, the value 1 is placed at the index 5, and the other elements in the list are placed following the new value 1 added. We now consider removing elements from a list. The remove function removes the first occurrence of a specified element from a list. So with the command shown, the element new is removed from our list. If there have been two elements with a value new, then only the first new in the list will have been removed. We can also pop off the last element of the list with the pop function. In this case, pop will remove the last element in the list. Also notice that the pop function returns the value of that element. Finally, if we give pop function an index, it will pop the element from the list at that index. As before, the pop function returns the value of that index, or 7 in this case, as 7 was in that index of my list. There are two important modified functions that are good to know. The first is sort, which sorts the items inside the list. As with our other functions, notice how sort is called using a dot operator with the variable my list. Lastly, we can reverse the elements in a list with the reverse function. I love how Python uses function names that make sense. Please note that you cannot sort a list that has some elements that are strings and other elements that are integers. You cannot do this as the elements in a list are of different types. If you ever want to do this, check out the Python lambda functions. Here are the last functions we will talk about with lists. The first is the index function, which will return the index of the first occurrence of a specified value in the list. So, for example, the value 5 in the list is at index 1. We can also count the number of occurrences of an element inside a given list with the count function. Since 7 does not exist within our list, it will return 0. As a reminder, if you need a total number of elements of a list, use the length function or len. In summary, this slide again shows all the functions we have covered in this discussion. There's one other important concept in Python with lists. This concept is called list slicing and returns the element from a specified range of indices. We covered list slicing in our previous video with list basics. Please remind yourself how to do this if you don't remember. Time to practice on new skills with lists. We suggest you load up your Python interpreter, create a new file, and define the list variable at the top of this slide. Then follow the directions on the slide using some of the concepts we have learned in this video. If all goes well, your program should print the list shown at the bottom of this slide. We suggest you pause the video to do this practice problem. If you follow the instructions properly, you should have the correct output. Good job! That concludes our video. We hope you now have a better understanding of how lists work within Python, as well as several functions to effectively use and manipulate lists. Thanks for tuning in. See you around campus.